Hello, welcome to another Adventures with Bill. On today's video, we're going to be making an overhead fishing rod holder. I don't know about you, but my wife thinks I have too many fishing rods. So maybe if I store them out of the way, up overhead, she won't notice how many I have. Actually, this is a great product for reducing clutter in the garage, and as you can see, I've got a lot of clutter. My next project is organizing the garage. But I want to share with you a way to make an inexpensive, handy fishing rod holder that will hold several fishing rods. I've seen lots of designs on the internet, and I think I'm going to come up with one that will work best for me, maybe work best for you too. So let's go. I already started this project by ripping down some boards on my table saw. They started out twice this wide, so I just cut them in half. I just used some wood that I had laying around. This was actually off of some old shelves that we pulled out of the house. It's got some funky looking contact paper, yellow, stuck to the back of it. That's no problem. So I got the wood for free, so that's a good start to any project free materials. I apologize for the poor lighting in here, but um, I'm going to try to show you up in the ceiling. I have these rafters, and that's where I'm going to be hanging my rod holders. After they're finished, we'll simply be screwing them in up, up into those rafters, the bottom of the rafters. Plenty of clearance for anything underneath, and uh, you'll see when we get to the final project. Okay, this is where we start laying out for where to drill the holes and cut the slots in the boards. I've got them spaced out every four inches, as you can see here, and uh, you can lay that out on your own boards. I've marked them off at four inch increments. Now I'm using the framing square to mark all four boards at the same time for the spacing on the holes. How far up to drill the holes from the bottom edge of the board. Since the holes are going to be two inches in diameter, I put the center line for the hole at an inch and a half from the bottom of the board. That will give a half of an inch clearance, which should be more than enough to support the fishing rods. Here you can see I have the two inch hole saw, wood cutting hole saw on my cordless drill. And uh, here you can see I've cut the first one out and it does a really good job. So now you're going to watch me drill some of these holes out. It doesn't take too long. It's a new sharp bit. Put it on the uh, crosshairs where you've marked it off. Just a gentle pressure and it cuts right through. Have to get that wood uh, plug out of there. And um, a lot of your hole saws will have a hole on the side of it to poke the wood out. Mine doesn't. So I've got to try to poke it out from the back. And I'm telling you what, that's a pain. So I'm only going to do it once. So here I figured out a, a, a better way to do it. And I didn't drill all the way through. I just drilled about half the way through on the front side. You can see how fast that goes. Sped it up for you. Flip the board over. And I'm going to finish drilling the hole out from the back side. So drilling it out from the back side, only have to drill a little bit, it pops out. Look how easy it is to remove that. In fact, on most of them, you'll see I drill, and as I go through the hole, it, uh, the plug actually just falls out right out the bottom, just like that, and so fast and easy. Another advantage of drilling halfway through, flipping over, then drilling the back side is, you, you see when I drilled through all the way, there's some rough edges there. But when you go halfway each direction, it's nice and smooth. That was so fun. Let's watch it again. Now that the holes have been cut, I'm going to lay off with my framing square, 45 degree angle, put a mark on it. Then I put another mark on it at uh, three quarters of an inch apart. And that gives me the slot that I'm going to be cutting out with the jigsaw. Go ahead and do this on every other hole. Now here's a couple more pro tips. Save you a little aggravation. You want to mark your boards as you lay them out. Um, for, for just drilling the holes, it's not important. But when you cut the slots to put the rods in, it is important. So 
This would be the front left board out near the front of the garage, and this would be the back left board. Below them I have the front right and the back right board. But here, here's what I'm showing you. Um, a lot of people will just put the holes, regular holes for the handles of the rods on one board, and then on the back board they will put these slots for the rod tips on every single one. And here's the deal. That puts your rods only four inches apart, and sometimes the handles of the rods with the cranks on the handles, uh, the cranks on the reels, can get tangled up even at four inches. So I'm alternating them. On this board, the handle will be through it with the crank. On this hole will be the tip of the rod. Handle, tip, handle, tip, alternated all the way through so that I'll have the the handle with the reel on the crank on this one, just a skinny tip here, and eight inches away will be my next one with the handle. Makes it much, much easier to get out. Now, these slots that I have cut to put the tips in, they're on an angle, so you'll see how the tip will just lay in this, but I put them all going the same direction. I've seen some where they do half of them one direction, the other half the other direction, when these are up, uh, installed up on the ceiling and it's dark, I don't want to try to remember, let's see, does it go to the left or does it go to the right? So they all will come in and out the same way. Muscle memory. Once you put a few rods in, take them out, you won't forget how to do it. Now, for the, for, that's on the back. On the back, I want, when I put the rod in with the rod handle, I want the rod to come in and sit from the left, in and sit. You notice on my front piece, I've got it coming the other direction. And that's because I'll be putting that rod in from the other end. So these slope to the left, these slope to the right. Because when I'm at the back putting the rod in, it's still going to come in from my right. I hope that makes sense. You'll see it when I get up. Pro tips save you some aggravation in using your overhead fishing rod holder. And to cut these slots out for the rod tips to come in from the side, we're going to be using uh, just your standard jigsaw with a, with a coarse wood cutting blade. It'll knock those out in no time. And here's another pro tip for you to save you a little aggravation. When you go to the hardware store to buy your hole saws to cut the holes out, pick up a pack of jigsaw blades to cut out the slots. Good grief, look at that blade. That wouldn't even cut my finger, I don't think. Ah. Now, when I cut this first slot out, it uh, went just the way I needed to, and I didn't bother recording it, but I went ahead and cut out all the other slots. You'll see the finished product here. After they were cut out, I took some sandpaper. I used 180 grit sandpaper. I wasn't repairing any small dents, but I just smoothed all the rough edges off of the wood so that it looks great. To attach these boards up to the rafters, I'm using a uh, wood screw with a square drive head. I think that's called an Anderson head, and that's the appropriate bit. It's supposed to be uh, not so easy to strip out, so you'll see how I do it. It's super windy outside now, so I hope the noise isn't too loud. This is the part of the video where I'm going to go up on the ladder and install the rod holders up there. Might be part of the video where you see an old man fall off the ladder. These ceiling trusses or rafters, whatever you want to call them, are located two feet apart. And so I'm going to put uh, the backboard on this one and the front one on this one. Be four feet apart. Most of my fishing rods are six feet long. Some are seven feet long. But if I space it three apart, 
that'll be six feet between them and, and it, it might be hard on the rods, they might flex. So uh, we're going to see how they go. Well, that was exciting. I don't believe in self-fulfilling prophecies because I didn't fall off a ladder. When I stepped back, tripped on the table saw, I just fell on the floor. I think I'm okay. I don't know if I'm okay, but I'm not hurt. And here's another pro tip for you. Start the screws into the board before you get up there. Makes it a lot easier, trust me. Well, this is the back end of the rod holders installed. Got to do the front side now. And you may be asking yourself, how many fishing rods does a guy need? Well, the answer, of course, is just one more. I'm sorry, it's not the most flattering view. But it's harder for you to watch than it is for me to film. All right, there it is, all secured. And what, is, what do we men say? That's not going anywhere. I don't know how well that turned out. I mean, they're up there and they're made right, but I wanted them up high to keep them out of the way. But I can't reach them now. I guess I'm going to have a foot school whenever I get a fishing rod down or up. How easy is that? And I've got room for more. Don't, don't tell my wife. Well, as we wrap this video up, I have to ask you, have you ever seen a more beautiful sight than those racks full of fishing rods? Um, but before we close, guys, I've got one more pro tip for you. Trust me, you're going to thank me for this. When your wife comes out and sees all those fishing rods up there and asks you, Where did you get all the... Where'd that come from? No, my, my wife never talks that way. Yours maybe, but not my wife. She's very nice. She would say, Honey, where did you get all those fishing rods? Well, be creative, okay? Um, you know, honey, I think, I think a lot of those were here already when we moved in. So I just inherited them. Or, uh, yeah, I think a lot of those are my buddies' rods. I, I keep them because their wives really get upset when they have too many fishing rods. You know what I mean? No, I'm not telling you to lie. I'm just kidding. Thanks for watching this Adventures with Bill. I hope it's helpful to you. If you've got any better tips of your own on how to make better rod holders, I doubt it. But if you do, please share those in the comments below. And if you wouldn't mind taking a minute, and uh, hit the like button and the subscribe button below this. I appreciate it. That helps my channel out so I can bring you more of these amazing adventures with Bill. So until next time, have a great week. God bless you.